Are you looking to learn how to make a needle felted cheese slice? If so, then you're on the right video because today I'm going to share with you everything you need to know to make a needle felted cheese and more. and welcome to today's video, Needle Felted Cheese. My name is Iceland and on this channel, Snowflake Forest Felting, I share needle felting videos, have needle felting tutorials like this one, and share product reviews from time to time. So if you're new and this interests you, please consider subscribing. And if you want to know more about anything you see here on this channel, be sure and check the links in the description below this video or leave a comment. I'd love to connect with you there. And as always, if you think my videos may help someone, please share them where you can. Now, let's get to today's video. Really quick here, this felted cheese slice was a request that I make from someone, I believe it was from TikTok, it might have been from a YouTube video. Either way, I was excited to make it and share with you how to make it as well too. It means a lot to me that you guys are suggesting things for me to make, so thank you for those. I am keeping a list and I am planning to make them along with a lot of other needle felting videos I have planned for you guys as well here on this channel. If you're wanting to check out my other social media for the needle felting, you can follow along Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, I have those accounts as well, and they're all linked down in the description for you too. Now let's get to the things that you're going to need to make your needle felted cheese slice. You're going to want your needle felting needles of your choice, a pair of scissors to trim up your project when you're done, I prefer these ones with the curved tip to get closer to my project. A fabric tape measure works best when you want to measure your project to make sure it's the size you want it. And then some bone colored wool for the inside of your project. This is just a filler wool, so nothing super special here. And then the special colored wool in the colors of cheese that you are looking for. I'm going to use this nice creamy yellowish color for the most of the project and then this to help get some depth in the circles of the cheese and this nice tan brown color for the rind. And remember, I'm going to have all this linked down in the description below for you. You can go and check out more there. Now, let's get to felting. To start, grab your foam surface or surface protector. Take out your needle felting needle you plan to use. Then you're going to take some of your bone colored wool or core wool. You're going to want to try to pre-shape this a little bit. It's going to be in the shape of a wedge, so a 3D triangle. And then on average, the things I felt are usually around 4 inches in length or size, height, just depending on what it is. When you squeeze your wool, it's going to give you an idea of how it's going to condense and felt down. I'm going to pull a little off what I plan to be the point of my cheese slice and add more onto the back here. And then you're just going to start piercing your wool. Just straight down into it with the needle and back out. And you're going to want to felt it from all angles and begin shaping it into that wedge slice. Tip, felt it a little more here, and then I'm going to felt the back, and you can already see almost right off to the start, I'm felting it into that wedge shape. Here's a little closer look at the felting process. Be super careful you don't pierce yourself, always watch what you're doing, do this when you can devote wonderful attention to it. This is going to be the most time consuming part right here, getting this all condensed and firm. See how squishy that is? That is not what we're going for. The more firm you make it, the better your project's going to hold, the better your project is going to look. So just continue this until you have a nice little wedge shape. And then also while you're doing this, go ahead and pick some round spots that'll be the holes in the cheese and give those areas a little more focus and felting. It's okay if you don't get them completely felted in because you can always go in with your scissors and trim those spots out and then recover them with wool. And don't worry, I can show you how to do that here as well in this video. And then remember the rind end here is going to be nice and smooth.
so you can see that it's starting to firm up some it's not quite as squishy as it was but it's still pretty squishy so I still need to keep felting So if you have any spots that are just not filling out or smoothing out the way they're supposed to, do not be afraid to add more wool. Just grab some of that bone colored wool and felt it straight on. I'm gonna go ahead and do this all around. My little felted circle spots are not really visible right now, and that's okay. You might have lost yours as well trying to get it all condensed. You can still tell here, like, this is one of my whole spots, and that is one of my whole spots. I have one here, and there, down here, pick one on that spot, and right there kind of in the same spot on each side. So just keep felting like you've been. And before long we will be adding that colored wool and making it look more like a slice of cheese here. I'll show you real quick how firm it is becoming here. But it's still not firm enough. Felted cheese should be getting pretty firm at this point. You can see here it doesn't squeeze a whole lot when I press on it just a little bit. Tip needs a little bit more. But I'll keep working on that. I wanted to show you now if you haven't been able to get your little cheese holes felted yet or you want to make them more prominent, just take your scissors and cut the wool out. This is why having the curved ones helps. And just like that, you can see how much deeper that is going in. Just remove the wool. Just like so, give it a little felt. And if you've cut away too much, Simply just take a little bit of your wool, fill it back in the spot, and felt it down in, just like so. Almost gone now. <laughs> now you can see it's almost gone now. You can make as many holes in your cheese as you would like. I want that one there, so I'm going to try to felt it back. I might actually have to trim away what I added in. See, and just like that, wool is extremely forgiving. All right, now it is time to take some of your wool and the cheese color that you plan to use and you're going to start covering your slice of cheese with this wool. Just felt it on like so and continue this until it is completely covered. completely covered in your cheese color. I'm going to want to add a darker color for the rind and you can get that going on the back end of your slice of the cheese as well or your edge just to give the cheese an edge. And 
then while you're felting all this on nice and smooth and making it look all firm, you can also be working on your little cheese holes that you cut out or felted in. Make sure you're making that imprint there. We are going to be adding in some color for depth here as soon as we get this completely felted. So just continue this until all sides are done. Remember, if there's any spots where the wool is coming through and not completely covered with the color, just keep adding little bits on until it's completely nice and covered. You don't want any of that white bone color showing through. It'll just make your project look unfinished. And then also you'll notice that if you're working with roving instead of batting, the roving is going to take longer to felt. The fibers are all aligned and just getting them rearranged and smoothed out is a little trickier compared to when they're going every direction. It kind of just hides stuff a little easier. The lines kind of show the obvious away. And then if there's any spots of color running through your wool that don't belong, just pull them out as you go. Sometimes if you felt them in, they create a dark spot or a noticeable shadow kind of area that you may not want in your project. Here you can see it a little closer. See, it's just not smoothed out yet. And see this batting is already looking a little smoother than the rest of the cheese, but it'll get there. Patience is so important. When I get towards the end here of the project, I give it more of an angle compared to a straight down to help keep those fibers smooth. And then certain spots that are maybe puffed up, I will go straight down over them. So alternating my angle and just being careful that when I do that, I'm not going into the project weird because then I risk breaking off my needle tip and that's never fun. Now that you've gotten most of your cheese pretty well felted, it still needs some time. Never want to skimp out on the felting process. But we're going to go ahead and add a very, very tiny amount of color into each one of your cheese circles to give it a little more depth. See that there? Just a hint of it. And see how much more that just pops out? Another piece for this other circle I have. Create kind of a ring with it, like so. And just felt it right down in there gonna make even a ringed edge just like so see see how great that pops out I'm gonna do a little bit more on this one now the roving works really nice for this because the fibers are already lined up and they're easy to make into a ring just like so and then continue doing this on all your other little circles key is here is not to use too much wool if you need to add any go in and do that it's easier to add it than it is to remove it all right and then once you have all your little cheese holes filled in with some darker wool just go over and give it a nice final felt make sure every fiber is nice and tucked as much as possible here you can see mine a little closer you can tell that's just not quite a finished product yet i need to spend some time working on it again the batting goes a lot faster than the roving but you can see how smooth the roving looks compared to the batting so it all depends on the desired look you're going for 
I thought the roving would be nice for making it look nice, smooth, and creamy. And then the batting giving a little coarser edge for that brine that is created on the cheese. So just take some time, be patient with it, and smooth everything out. Get your lines all nice and straight and angled, and then you'll be almost done. Decide you have any spots that you feel like you just need a little more cheese hole you can add on a little coloring these two didn't need as much depth as the rest of it but I feel like now that gives it an overall balanced look for the holes with the cheese whatever you feel makes it look the most realistic or the look that you're going for Once you're finishing up with all the felting and your project is nice and firm, it's not squishy, it's not movable, a nice solid piece of cheese, look at that. It's time to give it a little trim with your scissors and get all the fibers that you couldn't get tucked in trimmed off. I'm just going to go along it and trim it just like so. You're going to want to do this in an area where you have great lighting so you can see the fibers. I like to hold it up into the sunlight outside to see best and then the fibers don't make a mess into my workspace or wherever you are working. You can do it over a trash can or over a sink and just make sure you wipe the fibers out once you're done. I like to do so outside because I feel like the birds can pick up any of the excess and make a little nest out of them or whatever they're gonna do. And then just keep tucking anything in you might see might need smoothing out still. All right, and just like that, you have a piece of needle felted cheese. So I'll show it to you here closer. And that's it, that's everything you need to know to make a needle felted cheese slice and be a fiber artist too. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new. If you did, please be sure and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, share these videos where you can. And as always, if there's something you'd like to see me felt next, drop it down in those comments below. I might just make it. Thank you so much for watching today. Happy felting, bye.